with our devotion, our Jesus calling. It's pretty powerful tonight. It just always amazes me. I know y'all get tired of hearing me say this, but how, how the date, the writing, the, the, the text of the day seems to be always so on point. Right where we are, right where God's people are. This is July 28th. Jesus says, let my love seep into the inner recesses of your being. Do not close off any part of yourself from me. I know you inside and out. So do not try to present a cleaned up self to me. Wounds that you shut away from the light of my love will fester and become wormy. Secret sins that you hide from me can split off and develop lives on their own, controlling you without your realizing it. Open yourself fully to my transforming presence. Let my brilliant love light search out and destroy hidden fears. Watch this. Here we go. This process requires time alone with me as my love soaks into your innermost being. Enjoy my perfect love, which expels every trace of fear. We're going to Psalm 39. I want somebody to find Psalm 39, 1 through 4, and verses 23 and 24. And while you're locating that, I want to read that last paragraph again. Christ says, open yourself fully to my transforming presence. Let my brilliant love light search out and destroy hidden fields. This process requires time alone with me. That's what I want you to get right there. This process requires time alone with me as my love soaks into your innermost being. Enjoy my perfect love, which expels every trace of fear. Thank you, Lord. Now, Psalm 139 is a powerful psalm. It's one of my, one of my favorite. Uh, I just love every once in a while at least once a week, to go through and read that psalm. It's just a powerful psalm. So I want to encourage you uh, to read it. But someone read for us the first four verses and then skip down to verses 23 and 24 for our devotional scripture tonight. Psalm 139, verses 1 through 4, and verses 23 and 24. O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and know me. Thou knowest my down sitting and my up rising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar so off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and are acquainted with my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but O oh, Oh Lord, thou knowest it all together. Yeah, it is it, 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 it's powerful. It's powerful. Thank you, Nanny. And I just 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 let that sink into your spirit. Read read those first four verses again. Oh Lord, thou hast searched me and know me. Thou knowest my down sitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. <clears throat> Thou compassest my path and my lying down. Thou art acquainted with my ways. For there is no for there is not a word in my tongue. But lo, O oh Lord, thou knowest it all together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that that's we're gonna we're gonna 
skip down to 23 and 24, but I, I just have to mention the power in that psalm and in that verse. And for us, it's to understand and appreciate that we are so in relationship with our God that God knows everything about us. He knows everything about us and he's concerned about everything about us. God has searched us out. He knows us. He created us. So you don't have to hide anything from God. You can't hide anything from God anyway. But it's just powerful to know that that, that David said, you know, my sitting down and my rising up, that means God, everywhere I go, every move I make, God, you already know it. You already see it. You already know where I'm going before I get there. You know when I come back home from where I've been. You understand my thoughts. God knows our thoughts. He comprehends our thoughts. Scripture says he knows our thoughts before we even think. them. That's how awesome our God is. And that's how meticulous our God is about us. He comprehends our path. From the time we get up to the time we retire at night, God sees everything. He knows everything. God is acquainted with all your ways. Say amen to that. Amen. 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 And, and he loves you like that. That, that. That's my point. That's what I'm getting at. Appreciate the fact that your God loves you more than you can ever even imagine. We can't even comprehend the love that God has for us. 23 and 24. She 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 includes those two verses in that same song. Trust me, oh God. And I know my heart. Try and try me, and I know my thoughts. And see if there is be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it just powerful, man. This it just so it tied into what God is speaking into us tonight. Search me, oh God. Search me, oh God. We're going to come back. We're going to come back to that thought. Because you're going to ask God a question as we prepare to leave tonight. Search me, oh God. Mm -hmm. And know my heart. Try me. <laughs> know my anxieties. See, anything that's, that's, that's got you worried or, or you're concerned about, God knows about it. He already knows about it. And he's working it out. That old song they used to say, while well, I'm trying to pray it out, cry it out, God already worked it out. That's a word for somebody right there. He's working it out. Okay. All right. Uh, Daddy Paula, can you, can you, will you lead us in our opening prayer tonight? All right. Let us bow our heads. Father, we come thanking you, God. Thanking you, God, for being the God you are. No other God like you, Lord. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Heavenly Father, we come in tonight again asking you to touch Pastor Hart, to pour into him so he may pour out to your people. Work through him, Lord. Show yourself mighty in him. Pray, Heavenly Father, that as you reveal your word to us tonight, that we become not just hearers of your word, but be also become doers of your word. Pray, Heavenly Father, that you lead us and you guide us, not on this day, but each and every day of our life. Strengthen, Pastor, as he brings forth your word to us tonight. Pray, Heavenly Father, we be in the receiving mode to receive what it is that you're saying to us, Lord. It's another blessing we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. All right, fam, this is... Uh... We're going to continue with our, our, our spiritual disciplines, our thoughts on spiritual discipline. I tell you, I mentioned this on Sunday. Uh, looking at these disciplines has really been a blessing uh, in my life. And therefore, I know it, it has been a blessing for your life as well. Uh, spiritual disciplines. Uh oh, let me go back. I'm trying to clear out my thing so I can read it all. Okay. Yeah. Godly character. And the reason why I believe God led us to these to, to, to examine these spirit disciplines 
Godly character is developed over time by the practice of spiritual disciplines and the commitment to live by them. Habits of devotion like prayer, fasting, and Bible reading are the means by which we are transformed by the Spirit. Be encouraged to cultivate a life of discipline. I found where, where, where Paul uh, ministered to his, his son in ministry, Timothy. Go with me there, First Timothy. And he was telling him this same thing. And, and I want to uh, really encourage the ministers and, 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 the, and the spiritual leaders of the church to really hear this. As, as Paul was ministering to his son in ministry, who was going to be taking over uh, the mantle from him, 1 Timothy chapter 4. Verses six through eight. A good servant of Jesus Christ. That's what that's what Timothy was becoming. That's what Paul was pouring into him so he could become. And he spoke this word to him in first Timothy chapter four, verse six. He says, if you instruct the brethren in these things. You will be a good minister of Jesus Christ. Nourished in the words of faith and of the good doctrine, which you have carefully followed. Verse seven, he says to him, he says, so I'm gonna listen, he says, but reject profane and old wise fables and exercise yourself toward godliness. See, this is what these spiritual disciplines do for us. I mentioned before, they're like, they're like workouts. They're like, they're habits and practices that we develop and we must keep working at them. Verse seven, he says that to Timothy, he says, but reject profane and old wise fables and exercise yourself toward godliness. Verse eight, for bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things. Hallelujah. Having promise of the life that now is, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. So see, as you as you practice these disciplines and, and develop uh, working, developing these disciplines in your life, uh, not only does it bless you now and in, in your current life, but it blesses you even in the life to come. So, so this is why I just thank God that he's led us this way, that we're looking at these, these disciplines because they're blessing us now and they're gonna bless us in the life to come. Now, these are a few that we've looked at so far, uh, spiritual disciplines, uh, confession. I think if the Holy Spirit says so, we might deal with that with next week. Fasting we looked at. Uh, fellowship you looked at last week. I heard that that was uh, really blessed. You were really blessed by that session. So I'm gonna ask you to teach me uh, something that you learned last week about fellowship. And I want to thank God for Deacon Pollock uh, for, for working with that. Uh, I got to tell you a little story about that. Uh, generosity. And I've listed some scriptures that kind of flow with these. Of course, there are obviously hundreds more uh, that probably go with prayer, uh, rest. Uh, we talked about that on Sunday. I, I came from uh, that passage in Matthew chapter 11, study. Uh, the Bible is clear on studying to show yourself through uh, meditating on the word, reading the word, worship. We're going to probably come back to that. Uh, but fellowship, I want to hear uh, the one you looked at last week. I want you to share with me, teach me uh, what something you learned. And we're going to put a scripture in there for fellowship. Give me a scripture that maybe you uh, was blessed with last week. Or what did you learn? about the spiritual discipline of fellowship. When I was asking Nika Paula to teach, because uh, I was going to be at the retreat, uh, I said, which one are you going to deal with? He said, "We're going." He said, I'm going to deal with fellowship. I was like, oh, my God, that's good. Cause I didn't know what I was going to do with that one. I kept, <laughs> looking at that. I kept looking at that. I said, man, that is really, 
And that's the thing about these spiritual disciplines as we explore them and study them. They, they just be, they're just so powerful. Uh, but I didn't know how fellowship was, was a discipline. So help. So those who were blessed last week, uh, tell me what you learned about fellowship. Okay, don't everybody speak at the same time. <laughs> Give me a scripture I can put in there for fellowship. Okay, well, ain't nobody I, gonna talk to me. Well, it's fellow with well, one thing I got out of the fellowship was that it was uh that we if you in Christ, you're supposed to be willing to help others. That's a part of what fellowship is. Okay. And in fellowship, and it, it should be from the heart mm. and not just doing just to be doing or to be saying you be doing, you know, you're doing it just be, especially just because it's a part of church. Mm. That it should, it should come from the heart. Okay, that's good. That's good. Pastor D. Yes, sir. When we speak, when we speak of fellowship, let's look at it this way. Our fellow man, our yeah, you break it up again. We lost you. Elder, you might have to tap, type, uh, type your comments in the chat box, maybe. Okay, Pastor. Because you're going in and out. Go, yeah. go to your settings and turn your Wi Fi on on your phone. And yeah, see if that helps. Give me one scripture uh, that Deke used last week that he taught, used to teach about fellowship. Is it 12 and 9? I, don't, I didn't like the scriptures, though. Uh, 12 and 9. Uh, 12 and 9. Uh, Let me see. Uh, Romans 12 and 9. First John 1 and 3. John 1 and 3. Okay. Yes, and Acts 2 and 3. Acts 2, 42 through 47. Acts 2. Okay, that sounds like the early church coming together. Chap uh -huh. Chapter 2, what verses, Mark? 43 through 47, if I wrote down the right ones. 43 through 47. Okay. And quantity and quantity. Quantity and quantity. And Quante gave Matthew 19, 19. Okay, Matthew 19, 19. And Sean gave Proverbs 27 and 17. Okay, Proverbs 27. And 17. Amen. Okay, I'm just gonna choose. I'm gonna look at that first one right quick. This Romans 12 and 9. Let me see what that say. Got it. Look at that. Romans 12 and 9. Let love be without hypocrisy. Okay, avoid what is evil, cling to what is good, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor giving preference to one another. That's good. That's good. Not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continual and steadfastly in prayer. So as it relates to fellowship, I think that verse 9 and 10, let love be without hypocrisy. Like you said, Pam, it should come from the heart. Avoid what is evil, cling to what is good, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. Daddy is at work. In honor giving preference to one another. That's good. That's good. Okay. Okay. I like that. Yes. When he expressed and talked about that, he was telling us that um, we don't look at fellowship the way we always think about fellowship as in just coming together um, and being with each other within the church. That's why he said we need to make sure that what we're doing is not just doing some coming together, we got to really love each other and do what we're supposed to be doing. That we had to look at fellowship in a different manner instead of just saying coming to the building and being with each other. That is true. That is part of it. But the difference was that we should make sure that we live in the life. We're loving people and we're doing for people. Amen. Amen. That's good. He, uh, he categorized that one as, as like false fellowship. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Where it was coming from sin. Wow. Okay. 
That's good, Daddy. You blessed him. Pop, you blessed us last week. <laughs> We're taking notes. We be taking notes. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's good. Okay. All right. One other thing that uh the Dick talked about, Pastor, last week that stood out was uh in order for us as members and, and body of Christ to provide good fellowship to each other, mm -hmm. our fellowship with, with Christ must be right first. Absolutely. So he talked about getting aligned, being vertical with Christ. And once wow. we get lined up with him first, we'll wow. be able to go horizontal with each other and really, really show a true love and fellowship with each other. That's good. That's good. That blessed me right now. That blessed me right now. Okay. Big up jealous that. <laughs> that's good man okay that's good hey, hey Q you put the uh put the icing on that yeah because I, I I'm a, I think I'm gonna open that back up again next week uh, because God yeah God God is God is a God of fellowship to be a to be a child of God to know God the spiritual discipline of fellowship Listen, God and God and God's self is fellowship. God in three persons. Mm -hmm. right. yes. God, Amen. God, All right. Yes. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God, God Himself is fellowship. And so <laughs> wow. and, you, and you said it right. We we if, if our fellowship with God is not where it should be, then our fellowship with our sisters and brothers, it's not going to be where it should be. Yeah. So I'm going to go deeper. I'm going to go deeper, a little deeper with that one next week because I, 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 this, 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 the whole character and nature of God is, is fellowship. Yeah. 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 He, 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 God in three persons, the blessed Trinity, that whole concept of Trinity is really, the, the, it's really founded in, in the fellowship, in the, the concept of fellowship. So, Dad, thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. And uh, so, let's go back. We're gonna we're gonna come back again and, and, and deal with that. I'm gonna go a little deeper with that next week, and I'll put that that scripture in. Uh, we'll use some of those as it relates to fellowship. But let's armor up. Let's armor up tonight. I'm 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 gonna talk about something tonight that is. My God, this has. This has blessed me already, and uh, I want you. I want you to just sit with that turn in your heart for a minute. Solitude. I want you to just sit with that solitude. This is this is why God blessed us to share in the retreat last week, and it was powerful. God was. And God is doing this all over the world. He's, he's, he's retraining his prophets and his, and his men and women of God and helping us to understand and appreciate the importance of rest and solitude. So this is really, this is a part of that rest of the spirit discipline of rest, solitude. But solitude goes, 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 so much more deeper what, what God revealed to me last week and, it, and I'm still shaking every time I think about it. The reason why Jesus was able to do the miraculous things that he did was because of his time of solitude. I used, I used one of those scriptures last week when we were talking about ministering Sunday about rest and how how Jesus always retreated to a place of solitude. Mark 6, 30. Let's go there. Mark 6, verses 30 through 32. Not only did Jesus himself always retreat to a place of solitude, but he taught his disciples. I mean, he, he literally made them go off and be by themselves. That passage that I used. Sunday after he fed the multitude with two fish and five loaves of bread. Because obviously everywhere Jesus went, everywhere the disciples went, multitudes, thousands of people was always following him. So if he had not developed the practice of solitude, 
Solitude, Mark 6, chapter 30. Mark 6, verses 30 through 32. And all through scripture, you, you, you find these words uh, from Jesus. And this was, it, it, it is interesting as I'm studying, I'm opening up this word. Typically, it always, it usually came after they had done something great, a mighty miracle like the feeding of the 5,000. I'm, I'm, I'm seeking the Holy Spirit's mind about that because it, it just is interesting when they would, when they would accomplish something great and they would be excited and they would come to Jesus and just say, gee, look what happened, look what happened, look what happened, look what we did. And Jesus said, okay, fine. Now, now, now get in the boat and, and, and go off by yourself and, and just rest. This Mark 6, verse 30, then the disciples gathered Jesus and, and told him all things. Somebody need to meet yourself if you, if you have a conversation. Then the apostles gathered to Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And verse 31, and he said to them, come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. For there, first, for there were many coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. See, that, that's how... That's how the magnitude of the ministry that Jesus had and, 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 and his disciples traveling from province to province, from city to city, from town to town, preaching, healing, delivering, and, and just thousands. If you can't even imagine, man, we think we got people in America who are famous. <laughs> that you can't even imagine what Jesus' life was like when everywhere he went, there was hundreds and thousands of people following him and he and he and he taught his disciples the importance of solitude he says come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while for there were many coming and going and they did not even have time to eat and this happened very very often in their ministry but jesus he would send them away and then he would go off by himself. He would usually go to the mountaintop and, and just be alone. See, solitude is more than a state of mind. It's more a state of mind and heart than it is a place. There is a solitude of the heart that can come, that can be maintained at all times. So it wasn't just about retreating to a place where he could be all by himself, and just, just gather himself. But it was, it was what he accomplished, what he did while he was there. And, and, and now what God revealed to me, and I believe is very, becoming very clear to God's prophets and theologians and ministers, this, this is where you gain strength. It's in solitude. It's in that time that you're just alone and with God. See, solitude is being alone. It is the absence of distractions like people, computers, schoolwork, television, cell phones, etc. When we are alone, God has the opportunity to speak to us and receive our undivided attention. Man, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, the revelation that God is revealing to you, this is life changing stuff. And the reason why God is revealing it to us now, and I said this Sunday, the noise of the world is out of control and it's not, it's not gonna get any better. So if you don't develop the practice of solitude, just getting away, removing all distractions. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about how we can do that. But it's only when you are alone with God that God has really has the opportunity to speak to you and have your undivided attention. So let's talk a little bit about the practice of solitude. Just some things that, that you can do during that time. Uh, 
You can stretch, exercise, meditate, write, and pray. You can use your silence for reflection, solitude, and for building your life intentionally. What I've discovered just since the retreat in the last few days, when you retreat into solitude, when you just go and spend that time alone with God, God shows you so much about your life, about yourself. Spending quiet time with God and yourself is about building up your spirit, man, so you can hear from God. I've been reading Psalm 4610. That's one of our I hear scriptures. I've been reading that passage literally all my spiritual life. And I never saw really what God was saying in that about solitude. Be still and know that I am God. Be still. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. See, you, you, you can't even know God until you can be still. Until you can get yourself into the practice of solitude where you can just, just get away. And just you and God. Meditate, exercise, stretch, write. Journaling is one of the things they had us do last week. Pray. Um, but you use that, that time of silence for reflection. You're reflecting over your life. Uh, you just, 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 just spending time with God and it, and, and it, it builds your life intentionally. It allows you to focus on you. See, when you get along with God without no distraction, now it's just about you and God. It's about how you want to share that time with God. And what I'm discovering is really a quiet time for me where I just listen. Hallelujah. I just hear. Thank you, Lord. I just hear what God wants to say to me. And my God, the revelation, the revelation, the revelation that comes through that. And the revelation that comes through that. It's been a blessing. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you before we leave tonight how how I've been practicing that. And I'm gonna encourage you uh, to practice it along with me. The benefits of solitude, this is powerful. When you get away and just be be alone and spend that time, quiet time, just you, without alleviating all distractions, it improves your concentration and your energy. Years ago, when I started meditating and, and I was taking meditation classes and, 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 and the, the, the ninja told me that he said, 10 minutes of meditation is when you learn how to deeply meditate, 10 minutes of meditation can be the equivalent of eight hours of sleep. That, 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 that's how your, your spirit man is renewed. When, you, when you're able just to be quiet and go inner, go to your inner self. It improves your concentration energy. It makes your interests a priority. See, see, God wants to deal with you about you, about what he has for you, about what he wants to speak to you, about how he wants to bless you. And when you can get away and just you and God, and alleviate all those dis other distractions, you become the priority. It boosts your creativity. Man, I've seen that since I've been practicing this in a few days since we left the retreat last week. God just gives you ideas. He just shows you things. My God, I'm telling you, man, God can give you one idea that can make you a millionaire. Somebody say, I received that one. I received that one. Hey, Amen. I do too. I would you we agree on that. It boosts your creativity. It improves relationships. Amen, I, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Because obviously, when you focus on yourself, and now you are a priority. 
you know, that 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 improves who you are. You feel better about yourself. And anytime you feel better about yourself, your relationships, you're going to draw positive things and people into your Amen. life. Amen. It makes you more productive. How about that? Everybody want to be more productive. And it makes you more empathetic. It makes you more empathetic. Somebody find the definition of that. I, mean, I thought that that blessed me. The definition of empathetic. Makes you more caring about other people. I think that's what that, yeah. See, sympathetic, that's sympathy. But empathetic means you, when you have empathy, that's the difference between sympathy and empathy. Empathy means, I, you know, I feel, I feel you. As young people used to say, I feel you. I know where you're at. I can, I can, I, I, I can empathize with you. I'll just have sympathy for you. You know, people experience death and love loved ones. And, you know, we send what we call a sympathy card, you know. Yeah, but empathy it goes a lot deeper than that. Empathy says, "Okay, you know, I, I feel your heart. I feel your heart." So these are just some of the benefits of of of, of solitude. Um, and and I've experienced in just a few days since the retreat I've started. I've started this practice, and uh, so I was led uh, to call the ministry. To a, to a season of solitude. Uh, the month of August, we're going we, 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 we gonna to have a, a, a solitude fast. And I'm going to stop my share so I, I, can, I, I can see your faces. I want you to hear this good. Because this has blessed my life and this is going to bless you. For the month of August, you're going to take 10 minutes a day Excluding Sundays, not count Sundays. You never, Sunday is never a day of fasting. Sunday is always a day of celebration. So during the month of August, every day other than Sunday, you're going to carve out 10 minutes of your day, alleviating all distractions, getting away from people, work, TV, noise, and you're going to spend quiet time just you and God in solitude amen amen I'm telling you I'm telling you your life is never going to be the same again this is powerful this is what God is calling us to now because the tribulation of the last days we're entering there we're in that now but it's going to get much worse and God is teaching his people how to retreat, how to pull away, how to relax, how to retreat, how to have time of solitude. Now, you'll have to wait till, till August. I think, uh, what's August? August 1st. Sunday is the first Sunday, the first day. Sunday is the first day. Now, this is what I want you to do on August the 1st, which is Sunday. I do want you to practice solitude that day. I want you to carve out 10 minutes on the first day of the month. It's the eighth month. It's the month of new beginnings. I'm going to talk about that Sunday because the new beginning that God has for his people. Oh my God, it's getting ready to be glorious. But on that Sunday, when you carve out your 10 minutes of solitude, I want you to ask God a question. I want you to write this down. I want you to ask God a question. God, what do you think of me? God, what do you think of me? And then I want you to just to sit in solitude and hear. God is going to speak to you. Can you repeat that, Pastor? I, I can't hear you. The question? Uh-huh. On the first day of the month, August 1st, your 10 minutes of solitude, when you start that 10 minutes, I want you to ask God a question. God, what do you think of me? Wow. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's what I said. This was the exercise that we did at the retreat. And oh my wow. God. I have eaten. I It was powerful. It was powerful. Now you may not get an answer right then. Don't worry about it. The lady that was leading the session, she told a story about she was in a room full of church leaders. And they were they were they were led into that exercise. And she didn't hear anything. I don't know. I probably was longer than 10 minutes. I don't remember her saying how long they were sitting there. But she didn't hear anything from God. And it, it, it bothered her in her spirit. So when they released them from the session, she went to the chapel. She went to the chapel on the campus. And she sat in the chapel and she asked God that question again. God, what do you think of me? And the things that God began to reveal to her, she just began to weep. She just began to weep. And God told her, see, he said, see, I, I couldn't tell you this while you was in the room with all them preaching. So if, God does, if you don't hear God, if you don't hear God in that 10 minutes that you've set aside for solitude, you keep asking God that question. You keep asking God that question. As I sat there in the room with those pastors, first time I'd ever been exposed to that exercise, and I asked God, I said, God, what do you think of me? God said to me, he said, hallelujah. He said, you are my son, and I'm well pleased with you. And I began to weep right there in that room. And then about an hour and a half later, I went for my prophetic reading. They had us come, uh, Word of Faith, Bishop Bronner, they have a powerful prophetic ministry. And that's another thing we're going to be talking about, rekindling the five-fold ministries in the church. Prophetic ministry is a powerful ministry. So each one of the pastors, we had 15 minutes with their prophets. And, and she confirmed the very word that God has spoke to me in that morning section. She said, God is saying that you are his son and he's pleased with you. Mm -hmm. And 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 so that Sunday, that Sunday, when you set aside your 10 minutes of solitude, and the first couple of days I did it, it was I used my stopwatch. I put my stopwatch on, uh, on, my, on my phone because I, and when I came to myself, because I was like, oh, God, I don't even know if I can sit still in solitude for 10 minutes. But when I came back to myself, 12 minutes had passed. So it, 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 it'll go pretty quickly. But but and, then, and as you do it, I believe, at least for me, I know it's going to it's going to it's going to enlarge into a longer time than that. But start with 10 minutes, just 10 minutes a day when you can get alone with God and solitude, alleviating all distractions. But the first day of the eighth month, the month of new beginnings, and God is doing a new thing in your life. That's what we're going to talk about Sunday. Oh, yes, we are. Yeah. I want you to ask God that question. God, what do you think of me? And then I want you to record what God says to you. Write it down. Write it down. I mean, some of you might want to share, might want to share next week. Uh, but it's personal. It's personal. Uh, I mean, I can't even attempt to try to prognosticate about what God might say, you know, because God, as we read in Psalm 138, 39, God knows our hearts. He knows everything about us. He knows everything about us. I'm just curious, have anybody ever asked God that question? I had never asked God that question in my life. God, what do you think of me? Had anybody else ever asked God that question? Wow. Okay. So God is blessing us, man. God is leading us into these uh, spiritual disciplines that's, that's, that's really, but that's, uh, so pastor's calling us our ministry to a to a fast a solitude fast a call of solitude and i tell you this is gonna bless your life 10 minutes 
starting in August, 10 minutes a day. And I'm going to go back real quick. I know my time is up, but I just want you to see, uh, you know, even doing that tick method, you can stretch, you can exercise, you can meditate, you can write, you can pray. Uh, well, let me go back to, because I'm, yeah, it, solitude is being alone. That's, that's, that's what I want you to hear again. It is the absence of distractions like people. You might have to, I don't know, you might, I don't know where you might have to go get away from people, computer, schoolwork, television, cell phone, cut the phone off. Um, when we are alone with God, God has the opportunity to really speak to us and receive our undivided attention. This, this is going to bless you, you know. Uh, and these are just, you know, throughout the month, some things you might want to do. You got a specific call for that first day, but. Doing other times, doing that 10 minutes, you know, I, I didn't realize the exercise really was a, a form of, 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 of solitude, relaxation, you know, uh, certainly meditation is stretching, uh, writing, you know, and encourage us to journal, pray, obviously, uh, but to use that time of silence for reflection, for solitude and building your life intentionally, spending quiet time with God and yourself is about building up your spirit, man. So you can hear from God. This is how Jesus stayed so strong. This is how he got vision. This is how he got power. And just think, you finna tap into that same power. Improve your concentration and your energy. You know, makes your interest a priority, which, which is already a priority to God. God wants what you want. He said he will give you the desires of your heart. It boosts your creativity. We need, we're going to have to turn our young people onto this, uh, you know, uh, it improves your relationships. It makes you more productive and makes, makes you more empathetic. Okay. So we got our, we got our marching orders. We got our call to, uh, to solitude. Okay. Man, I feel real quiet right now. I feel a spirit of solitude over your heart right now. Just share Couple, you share how you were blessed, how you were blessed by that word tonight. Pastor, can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. In being, trying to get in that spiritual moment of solitude and asking God that question mm -hmm. and trying to take yourself out of the flesh, mm -hmm. how do you, I know you say and pray and you know, exercise and try to meditate. Well, how do you, how are we to do it? I'm trying to, how I say it, without being anxious about waiting to hear from him or what he might say or being afraid of what he might reveal to <laughs> I mean, How do you? <laughs> That's all the above. That's the Holy Spirit, the flesh and blood that reveal that question to you because I know a lot of y'all had that. Oh yeah. I got I wonder if anybody else kind of thought about yeah. that. I, know yeah. I mean, I mean yeah. you're anxious because you want to know, but then you're afraid of what he might tell you. How do you get in that that spiritual moment so you can receive whatever it is, you know, regardless? That's <laughs> an excellent question. That's an excellent question. And I think I think why the exercise itself is so powerful. And I think I think the lady that led us in, in it may have, may have mentioned this. Let's see, first of all, you gotta you gotta trust the love that God has for you. You gotta first of all know that God ain't gonna say nothing to you that's gonna hurt you. Whatever He reveals to you, it's gonna be it's gonna bless you. Now you might not like it. I'm not. I'm, I'm saying you might not like it right then, but it's gonna bless you. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna bless you, but yeah, it, 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 it. I think that's that's Pam. That's excellent, excellent observation. You know, and 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 it pushes us. We talk about fellowship and and knowing God. See, to know God as your Father, you to know that God loves you so much. Even if He was displeased with you, God probably wouldn't tell you that. You know that. Look. We parents, all of us are parents, most of us, you know, 
Yeah. Even when we're angry with our kids, the way we let them know is out of love. Yeah. So thank you, Holy Spirit. Whatever God says to you is going to be out of love. That you can appreciate and take that to the bank. Yeah. And if he's displeased, he's going to let you know that out of love. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't, you don't have to be anxious or fearful. And I think the lady that, that led us in the exercise said that when, when, when they were first led to do the exercise in the session where she was and she didn't hear anything from God. It, 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 it grieved her spirit. It made her upset. And, uh, and she left out of there crying because she, she felt the same way. Maybe God, you know, maybe, maybe God is not pleased with me. I don't know. Maybe God didn't, you know, but then she said she retreated to the chapel, got all by herself, and she asked God that question again. And the things that God began to say to her, you know, just 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 blessed her, you know. And and she gave us they gave us two pages of scripture, two pages of scriptures. That 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 speaks to how God feels about us. We're gonna mm -hmm. get to that. Mm -hmm. We had to develop what what was wow. called a charter. We had to develop what's called a charter. And 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 just 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 full of scriptures, how fearfully and wonderfully made you are, uh, how how you the head and not the tail. I mean. You are you are you are you are the apple of God's eye, you know. You're His special creation. I mean, He loves you more than we we can't even fathom the love that God has for us. So it's you know you you don't you don't have to have any consternation or any fear about God's response to that question. And but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna unpack it again next week. Uh, but I, I just wanted you on the first day of the new month, uh, just ask God that during your time of solitude. God, what do you think about me? If God doesn't respond right then, that's God's prerogative. If he responds, write it down. Write down what God says to you. I think just the exercise itself is power in itself. Just taking that time away in solitude with just you and God. See, first of all, that's going to bless you. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 The deeper part is, 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 is trying to ascertain what God might say. Don't even worry about that. I just heard the Holy Spirit say, don't even worry about that. See, the power and the blessing is, watch this, and being able to hear God. Amen. Yeah, that's the blessing right there. And you know why that's a blessing. Why is that? A, why to be able, just to be able to hear God is a great blessing. Why is that? Because the word of God says, my sheep, uh. they know my voice. Yeah. So just to be able to hear God, whatever God says, is, is, is confirmation that you're his sheep, you're his child. And you can hear what God wants to speak to you. Yeah. So Pam, that was awesome. Awesome flesh and blood didn't reveal that question to you. Did that did that subside your, your anxiety a little bit about it? Yes. Okay. Yes, very much so. Thank good. you. Good, good. Okay. Was well, one other person just tell me how you were blessed by the teaching tonight? Then we're gonna let you go. I know we over time. Pastor, I was blessed by it because um, everything you said is is on the path in which God has me now. When I got into that accident, I told you um, Sunday, the Holy Spirit told me don't be in a rush to get a car. That he wanted me to be still. Mm -hmm. And I have a, a girlfriend in Detroit who's a pastor. And her and I have been talking off and on, and we kind of linked up again, and they have prayer 
three times a week over the phone. So I've been calling in and getting on the prayer line. And the Holy Spirit has been waking me up like three o'clock, 3.30 in the morning and just giving me that alone time with him. And I find myself going to bed about eight o'clock. So getting up at 3.30, you know, it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. the first time I heard the Lord speak to me, um, he had gave me the scripture in Psalms um, 51 and 10, where it say, create in me a clean heart, Mm. oh God, and renew the right spirit within me. Mm. And that was a a scripture of chastisement. Mm -hmm. But it was like you said earlier when you were telling Pam, it was done in love because I recognized that I had gotten bitter and angry and I was holding on to anger And I didn't, you know, realize it. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord had to let me know that I needed him to clean that heart up again Mm -hmm. and to not just the right spirit, but a steadfast spirit. And he let me know that I was where I was because I took my eyes off of him. Mm -hmm. You know, so that solitude is it's it's good. But I never asked him what he thought of me. So this is going to be interesting. Yeah. It's, it's going to be life changing. I'm telling you the revelation that. <laughs> yeah. And God told me this. He said, son, when, when, when you start that Zoom call on <laughs> Wednesday, he said, that hour of power is going to be life changing. This might be the most life changing teaching that we've done. Thank so you, far. This is going to bless you. I hope it's okay for me to share from Nick. Nick in the chat box, he said, I'm blessed with the understanding that being still and meditating is great for the soul. <laughs> Amen, my brother. That's Nixon. God bless you. Well, Candace, Candace say, I'm excited to hear what God has to say about me. <laughs> Looking forward to the spiritual growth. Amen to that. Man, I tell you, y'all excite me. Y'all excite me. Boy, I'm telling you, friendship, man, we going to another level, boy. People ain't going to know us. People ain't going to know us. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes. Hi. Um, hey. I know you. Re- I know you're recording. Where could I get a copy of this? Where? Well, where, where can I view it? You know, normally I'm on taking notes all the time, but mm-hmm. I've been a little preoccupied. But I still try to jump in and listen. Is it on the website? Yeah, Sean has sent it out. He uh, typically what happens with Zoom is after you log off, then the the session is is recorded, and then it's it's it's, it's put to a link. And Sean gets the link, the host gets the link, and then the host can send it out. So he'll send it out to you. In fact, he's they, he's vacationing. I think he's been vacationing ever since I started teaching on rest. <laughs> he's been vacationing. Let me tell you, been vacationing. So they, had, they and uh, so he, yeah, he he recorded it. We recorded it. We always record it because when we get our website up and running, that's been one of my prayers uh, that we uh, we're gonna we're gonna enhance our web footprint. And uh, all of our, our Bible studies, our worship experience, all of this, our Facebook page is excellent. We get lots of hits on our Facebook page, but but I want to I want to improve. I get our website up. Uh, yeah. So, but yeah. As soon as he gets the link ready, we'll send it out. We'll send it out. We we'll send it to Pam. And Pam can send it out to everybody. Because this one you want to share with people you love. You want to share this word, this word with them. And we're going to be doing more teaching on this because. I said this Sunday in the, in the sermon, I challenged those pastors in that room. I said, we got we to teach our people this. I said, God has brought us to this place and blessed us with this experience. So now we have to go out and teach our people how to rest. And uh, so obviously, you know, God used me to make that statement. I got I to gotta set the pace. I got to be the first one, you know, and I'm going to continue to teach, you know, this because I believe this is a this is an end time. Uh, word that God is sending to us because family, if you don't learn how to retreat and rest as crazy as the world going to get, you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. And you got to be able to pull yourself out of this madness and just have some me time with God, some alone time with God. And uh, God is teaching us how to do this. And we are glad to be able to teach our members. And I want you to share uh, the love of God and charity's teaching with the people that you love as well. 
All right. All right. I feel led to close us out tonight, so I'm going to pray. All hearts and minds are clear. Hey, Pastor, I just want to tell mom in the background, she looked like she on that fish, friendship choir back there. <laughs> <laughs> I, look, I'm really impressed this word in her because she, she said something today when we was leaving the daddy at the facility. What'd she say? There's just so much going on. And it is. This 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 situation with dad is, is, is what mom has had to do getting on. I've been painting every day. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, yeah. She knows she's I'm trying to impress this. God is impressing this word on her as well. You got to rest. You got to pull away. You got to just take a step back. And, you know, you know, those those wives are cut from a different cloth. My Paula can tell you they uh, death to death do us part meant something to them. So, I mean, you know, she's there every day. She goes every day. And, uh, you know, so I'm trying to get her to, to, to hear what God is saying about rest. And uh, she has the rest take a day of solitude as well so she's getting a little better with it uh, so thank you thank you thank you all so much uh let me close with prayer tonight i want to i want to i want to close with prayer tonight father we just we just thank you man we just so honored that you would share your will and your heart with us revelation for these end time season you told us that he was going to share with us how to how to survive how to thrive and survive in the last days when men's hearts are failing them and people are dying pestilence is taking over the covid is rising again god the murder rate is going up and just we're in the world but we're not of the world and you're teaching us how to come out of the world if only for a moment of solitude that will keep us from losing our minds. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for instituting rest. You call the Sabbath into being for your creation. Your word says the Sabbath was created for man. And now you're calling us and teaching us how to engage and experience that season of rest in this last day. And we appreciate it. We thank you for our ministry. We thank you for our children in the Lord, for our leadership. Continue to bless our families, God. Continue to heal those who are suffering. Yes. And continue to bless us. We give you all the glory. We love you. Yeah. We appreciate you. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.